Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches and this week like every week we have a great variety for you guys and girls from modern watches to vintage to something for the ladies there really is something for everyone in this drop and I'm really excited to bring you these 10 watches now I do have an announcement to make if you follow us on Instagram or are on our WhatsApp broadcast list you'll already know but we are now the official London stockist of Squale um, which is super exciting. It's something we've been working on with the brand for a little while now and I've been wanting to expand our stocking range because right now obviously we are the authorised stockers for Fizz but I wanted, I'm wanted, i wanting to expand that and we're in talks with a couple of other brands as well that really fit with our theme of having something either unique or something priced incredibly well. Squale fits obviously both of those things. And it's a brand we've sold pre-owned for many years. We've sold many of them. So it's a brand I do believe in and I think a fantastic value for money. So I chose 10 watches from their lineup. I didn't choose all of them. I, I specifically chose 10 I wanted to stock. They're available to purchase directly from our website at Kibble Watches. We have an authorized stockist section to make it nice and easy to find. And also they're available to view and purchase physically in our office by appointment only here in Clerkenwell, London as well. So yeah, very exciting news. I think I've been wanting to do for a little while and I'm glad it's now done. Now the week coming up, so this video goes out on the Saturday, the Monday after the video goes out is when Danny comes back off his holiday. He's been away for two weeks in Egypt. I hope he's enjoyed it. Um, but he's going to be getting back in, cracking on. We have lots of watches coming soon. So make sure you're following us on Instagram. You keep an eye on our coming soon section. Um, and then that after that week, so the Friday of that week, Friday, and I'm going to open up my calendar real quick, Friday the 18th, I go away for a week. So I'll be gone from Friday the 18th and I'll be back Monday the 28th. That sounds scary to say. I've never had that much time off. <laughs> so it's going to be good. I'm going to be in Wales. It's not like I'm going anywhere too crazy. I will still be working, people will still be getting paid, we'll still be buying and consigning, Danny will still be in the office taking in new watches, uh, shipping out watches that I've sold, so business continues as normal, however I would appreciate it if you sort of don't call as much for me, um, obviously call the office, I'll make sure Danny's there to be able to take any calls um, and emails as usual, I'll get them done, uh, just again be a bit more patient, uh, there may be a delay as I enjoy some much needed time with just my family out in the sticks of Wales. It's going to be great. So now that all that is out of the way, what is on wrist? I'm wearing a watch that I have fallen in love with. This is an absolutely gorgeous Boulevard Devil Chrono or Devil Diver Chronograph. Vows you 7733. Really gorgeous example. Beautiful dial the way it's patinaed. Really nice bezel as well. It's one... Like many watches, I buy them because they are such good examples, but then I want to keep them. So I'm going to I'm gonna sort of use some discipline on this one. I am going to sell this, so it is going to be available. So if you are interested, do send over an email or a message. I can send you over all the details. It does need a service, so we're going to get that done first. Um, but other than that, it's ready to go. It looks gorgeous. So that's what's on wrist out of the way. Let's crack on with what is on desk. So let's take a closer look. We're going to start with the Rolex Sea Dweller. This isn't any old Sea Dweller though. This is a triple six. For those of you who know your references, you're going to know exactly what this is. So let's take a closer look. So the Rolex triple six Sea Dweller. This is a fantastic watch. Now, those of you who know me know I love the No Date Submariner, the 14060, I believe is the reference. This, however, really is up there because I do find a date complication useful. And a lot of people, when they hear the word Sea Dweller, they think that's going to be way too big because obviously it is a far thicker watch because you have a helium escape valve and it adds the heft because it is a true tour dive watch. Um, you also don't have the Cyclops over the date, which for me is quite nice. The Cyclops doesn't offend me like it does some people, but I do think it looks nicer without the Cyclops. Um, but one thing that's very interesting about this reference in the 666, the 16660, that's why it's called the 666, is it's still 40 millimeters and when we get on to dimensions and showing it on wrist you will see how well this wears and that thickness is not uncomfortable it actually wears super comfortably it does come on its original rolex bracelet and it does come with a rolex box as well uh, condition on this one is very fair it's honest and this one's from circa 1987 uh, and the triple six very rarely comes up and when it does the prices are usually very high so when you see what we've got this priced at you're going to realize this is a great deal 
Inside is the automatic Rolex caliber 3035, a notorious caliber used in so many of Rolex's models. Obviously, you've got your original screw down crown. Everything about this is amazing. I absolutely love it. And again, for those of you Rolex fans out there, you will know about this reference. You'll have heard about it. You'd have probably researched it. And if not, head over to our website. We've done a good write up for you to check out as well. So let's show it on wrist and tour dimension. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. Now, the bracelet will fit a, about a seven and a quarter inch so there is more room on the clasp than where it's currently at. A really good looking watch, that is for sure. So as I say, 40 millimeters by 48 mil lug to lug. Yes, it's 14.5 mil thick, but it wears incredibly well. And 20 mil lugs with drilled end links as well. So endless options are nice and easy to swap out onto a strap. I really do think this is a great everyday watch or just a alternative to the Submariner. If you're wanting something a little bit different, this is what I'd tell you to go for. Go check it out on the website today. From there, we're gonna to stick to vintage and we're gonna go over to this absolutely wonderful Amiga DeVille with this electric blue dial. Not a watch you see often, so let's take a closer look. So it's Amiga DeVille time and this is a gorgeous example. Look at that electric blue dial. The way it plays with the light and it's quite dynamic. In certain lights, it's very dark, almost black. In other lights, it becomes this really bright blue and in other lights it just changes it again absolutely gorgeous and an interesting date placement at nine as well so this is the reference 146.017 from circa 1969 um so yeah really good looking watch for its age and inside is a manually wound uh, amiga caliber 930 you have a nice case back right there obviously as we say manually round you've got those white hands as well with the loom which just looks so so good uh, and the indices as well with their tritium, which has aged very, very nicely. Uh, original crown as well, as you'd expect, and it is paired on a original Amiga bracelet. Now something to keep in mind with these older bracelets is they are very comfortable. However, they're not built like today's standards, so you do get a bit of end link wobble. Um, and the bracelet, you know, is to be expected at the, at the end of the day, in my opinion. And luckily, this watch on a strap looks incredible. So this bracelet, completely wearable. However, on a brown suede or something like that, in my opinion, this looks amazing. So. Really gorgeous watch. Again, it does come with its Amiga box and the condition is everything here. The originality of this dial and the sort of overall look is so, so good. And for the price, I really don't think you can go wrong if you're looking for a vintage chronograph, whether it be from Amiga or any sort of notable brand uh, from Switzerland, this is one you should be looking at for sure. So let's show it on wrist and tall diamond. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, as you can see, fits very nicely. This watch, this is where it just goes from strength to strength really at 35 millimeters by 40 mil lug to lug, only 13 mil thick and 19 mil lug. So a little awkward on the lug length, but not impossible at all. I mean, that really does look at home. And I, a lot of people think smaller watches like this are too small on, on sort of a seven inch wrist or, or around six and a half plus. I couldn't disagree more. I think these look so good and they wear so well. So if you're unsure, book an appointment, come see it for yourself. Um, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Let's go on to the other Amiga on the table. And this is the one that's nicknamed the Cero. Now, for those of you that know your Amigas and know your vintage references, you'll know this is the same reference as the Ranchero, the 2990-1. Um, however, this one doesn't say Ranchero, which makes it a Cero. So yeah, pretty cool. Let's take a closer look. So it's Cero time, the Amiga Seamaster Cero. A really gorgeous example with the broad arrow hands with that beautiful loom in there. Truly fantastic. So the reason this, in my opinion, is a very important and very special model is because it's the reference 2990-1, which for those of you that know your vintage Amiga will know that that is also the reference for the Ranchero. Now, unfortunately, what a lot of dealers do is they take these very beautiful all original examples and they put Ranchero on the dial. They go get it printed on or they swap the dials for a Ranchero dial. The reason being they are worth double to triple the value of these Cheros. It's an unfortunate reality of the watch world. Um, at the end of the day, you could buy it and we could do it. Anyone could do it really. You could buy this watch from us at the price it is. If you have a dial, uh, you could swap it out and no one would really be any the wiser. Unfortunately, that's the way it goes. So yeah, the 2990-1, in my opinion, these are getting harder and rarer to find for the exact reason I just mentioned. And inside is a manually wound Amiga Caliber 267. You have uh, the waterproof snap-on case back. 
you do have some marks. Um, unsure where they came from, to be honest with you. Um, it is a worn vintage watch from 1959, so do keep that in mind. This is a very old watch, and it still looks fantastic. You have that beautiful patina or character on the dial, which matches the hands and the indices so, so well, and it really creates this character. Obviously, we paired it on this mock um, ostrich, which just emphasizes the overall design. I think it looks truly fantastic. Nice original Amiga crown as well. A good looking watch, and again, 36 mil, 1959, that is quite rare. A lot of the watches of this time were 32, 33, 34 mil. 36 mil was considered almost oversized or jumbo at the time. Obviously, 38 mil was the, the sort of peak, um, but 36 was a large watch. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, the 36 mil wears so perfectly. And this is one good looking watch. Obviously, it being mostly dial really emphasizes the size. So 36 mil by 44 mil look to look, only 9.5 mm thick and 18 mm lug so endless options if you're not a fan of this pairing though i think it looks really really good you could totally tone it down with a uh, plain brown um, but this looks good so go check it out on the website today now let's go on to a grand seiko omiwatari i think that's how you pronounce it probably absolutely butchered it but you guys and girls know i am terrible when it comes to pronunciate pronunciating there you go pronouncing watch brands and their names so <laughs> this is going to be no surprise but let's take a close look at this gorgeous watch next we have what has quickly become and very easily become one of my favorite grand seikos to date now uh, there's a couple of grand seikos i absolutely love but this has taken the lead by far i think this is absolutely gorgeous obviously i butchered the pronunciation of the name at the uh, the intro part so i won't try again but this is the reference sbgy 007 g and it has the most incredible dial now grand seiko they are famous for their dials and their dial finishing and the colors that they choose however recently they've done a lot of additions where the colors don't quite portray how they probably intended them to or they're very muted or very toned down um, I don't know why this is. Maybe it's because they're really pushing the boundaries with technology. Who knows? But this model really speaks as it should. You look at the dial and it looks incredible. The finishing, obviously, as you'd expect with Grand Seiko with the Zeratsu finishing, is so perfect, so crisp and so clean. You have this really nice finish into the case and multiple finishes as well. Not all polished. You've got brushed and polished you have a really nice deploying clasp. I'm not a huge fan of deployings. A lot of people know this. I prefer a pin buckle. However, this one is incredibly comfortable because of how short it is. Often they make them far longer. And then you flip it around, you have this wonderful movement. What you're looking at right here is the Grand Seiko Spring Drive Caliber 9R31, which is finished beautifully. You have a power reserve hidden away in the back. Again, keeping that dial super clean and aesthetically pleasing. And you can just about see the spring drive spinning away behind that plate it really reminds me of sort of german watchmaking or old british uh, pocket watches with this big plate uh, and very little actually visible but still beautiful this one's from december 2021 it does come with its full box and paperwork as well and it's in fantastic condition someone hurry up and snap this up because I love it. They're short on wrist, and again, this is where this watch really shines for me. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. This watch sits so flat to the wrist, but it's it's this weird almost cushion case. It's not quite round, and it wears so, so well. So it's 38.5 mil by 43 mil lug to lug. It's only 10 mil thick and 19 mil on the lugs. Typical Seiko being a little bit awkward, but to be honest, this strap pairing works so well with it, I wouldn't swap it personally. What a gorgeous watch. Go check this one out on the website today. From there, let's go over to this Credor Seiko. Yes, not a watch you see often. This is super cool for the money. This is insane. And I talk about it in my write-up and we're gonna talk about it. So I won't, I won't say too much more, but let's take a closer look at this slightly over 2000 pound watch, which blows my mind. Let's take a closer look. So next up, we have this incredible Credor Seiko, as you can see, proudly stated on the dial with both brand names. And this has one of Seiko's, if not Seiko's most complicated movement. Thank you, Seiko, for doing that. But this is the reference GCBG987. Uh, and inside is the automatic Seiko Caliber 4S77A, as you can see behind here with this gold plated 
um, movement. Very, very nice. Creedor logo proudly stated on there as well. This watch circa 1999 to 2003, and it does come with its box and booklet. The bracelet is short, and we'll talk about that when it's on the wrist, and also how it works with the clasp. For anyone who's bought this watch, I'm going to be sending you this video so you know how this watch works. Like a lot of watches, when you push this one down, it locks into place. Um, this watch doesn't. It is just tension fit. However, when you bring the other one over, that's what locks it into place. Um, so that is correct. The fact that this just opens is normal. You have to make sure you put that down and then it's secure. Hopefully that makes sense with that. Now let's get on to how this watch actually works. So you can see you have your normal hour, minutes, and seconds going around. You have a date over here. You have the date over here and you have a secondary time zone over there. So let's go through it. On the bottom crown, that is for your inner rotating bezel, nice and simple. Let's go on to the cabochon crown, which by the way, beautiful black cabochon right there. This is a screw down crown, so obviously unscrew the crown and in the first position uh, is how you wind the watch. Now, when you pull it out to the second position, that is for changing the day and the date. Now, obviously make sure you are not in the mode of it changing over already. So make sure you're out of, in my opinion, 8 p.m. and 4 a.m. As long as you're not in that period, you're not gonna interfere with the automatic date change. So we are currently at 10 past 10 in the morning. So when we pull out the crown that one position, one way, as you can see, changes the day of the week right there. As you can see, Tuesday, Wednesday, so on, so on. Um, it does wind the watch in that same position, so do keep that in mind. And as you go backwards, you can see you change the date. Nice and simple. Then pull out the crown all the way. This is how you change the time. And the 24-hour zone is coupled to this position. So if you wanted to set that one specifically, you'd go around. Let's say we want it to say six in the afternoon, we'd go around till it says six, like so. And then this is where the top crown in its neutral position does nothing. As you pull it out, you see the date jumps over there and you can now set the hour hand independently. So let's say we want it to be matching, we go down to six and push it in. There we go. So hopefully that explains how you use the watch. Is it complicated? Yes. Once you get the hang of it, it's simple enough. And once you've set it, you'll be fine. But yeah, that is why Seiko made the most complicated movement to, to absolutely baffle me. So there you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> but let's show this one on wrist and tall dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. Now this is tight on me. So I would say this fits as about a 6.9 inch wrist just under my wrist size, you'll be perfectly fine. Um, so what you're looking at right here is 39 mil by 46.5 mil lug to lug, 12.5 mil thick and 19 mil on the lugs right here. Do keep in mind, this is a solid fitted end that cannot be removed. So it has to stay on the bracelet or have a strap made that can go around this end. So do keep that in mind. Obviously, strap tailor could happily and easily make you something to work. So yeah, go check this watch out on the website today. From there to probably my favorite watch on the table just because of how fun it is. It's a Louis Erard and Elaine Silberstein. You hear those two names together, already you know it's going to be wacky and fun. And this one has an awesome date complicate or day complication, which is smiley faces and sad faces, which is kind of fun. So let's take a closer look. Next up, a incredible Louis Erard and Elaine Silberstein. This is a titanium case. It looks fantastic. I mean, from a distance, you can just tell this has Elaine Silberstein written all over it. A fantastic watch designer, an absolutely crazy person, and someone to really pay attention to, in my opinion, in the watch world. Creates some amazing designs in the 90s and 2000s and continues to do so. And it's great to see Louis Erard pulling all these designers together to create these fantastic watches. So as you can see, you've got those really distinct hour, minute and second hand, which looks amazing. And the highlight for me is the day of the week. So as we pull the crown out, obviously going forward changes the date and going backwards changes the day. So right now we are on Monday. As you can clearly see, that is Monday's face. And as we go through, we are now on Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, we're starting to get there, Saturday, nice and smiley, and Sunday, the biggest happy face. So there you go. A really cool little quirky feature. I don't think anyone's done that before, so it's great to see. You have obviously your Louis Erard signed crown, exhibition case back right there, which is the automatic Salita. Um, SW2, 
SW220-1, sorry, I was trying to find it on my spreadsheet, and this one's from May 2022 with its full box and papers and paired on its incredibly and surprisingly comfortable fabric strap, which features a nice uh, Velcro patch part right there, but let's show it on wrist and taut dimensions. And here is the watch comfortably on my seven inch wrist, and I say comfortably because this strap is super comfortable. So what you're looking at here is 41 mil by 47 mil lug to lug with this very unusual case design, 11.5 mil thick and 22 mil on the lugs, a really cool watch. And one well worth checking out if you have to sync a bit different and something from the norm. So go check it out on the website today. From there, let's go over to the Vertex. We have an MP45 mono pusher, which means single pusher chronograph in automatic, fantastic condition, complete set. This should fly straight out really. So let's take a closer look at so this. So it's Vertex time with the MP45. This is the absolutely amazing mono pusher chronograph. As I said, mono pusher means everything's done through one chronograph pusher. So that is start, stop and reset all through one pusher. You have that really distinctive uh, vertex crown and a nice exhibition case back right there as well, displaying the automatic Solita SW510MP for mono pusher. And obviously vertex with their famous highly profiled loom blocks, which just look incredible. I think they do some of the best in the game for sure. And a really beautiful dial all around. Case is very nice. Obviously this is the automatic one, so it is slightly thicker than the manual one, but honestly at this kind of price point, I don't think you're gonna care and it really doesn't make a huge difference. Yes, the manual is thinner on the wrist, but this one still wears incredibly well. This one's from February 2019, just come with its box and paperwork and its accessories as you'd expect. And it's paired on its Vertex rubber strap, a good looking watch from a brand doing amazing things with true, true military heritage. And Don over at Vertex is a great guy and one I highly recommend you support by buying one of their watches. And if you want a bit of a discount, here's one to get pre-owned. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimension. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. You can see that doesn't look bad at all. It looks really good. This is 42 mil by 49.5 mil lug to lug right under that 50 mil sweet spot, 16 mil thick and 20 mil lug. So endless options if you're not a fan of this pairing. However, I think it works really well. So go check it out on the website today. From there, let's go over to our first Norcane. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Norcane Neverest, not Everest, Neverest. A very cool looking watch. The dial on this is amazing and the build quality I mean, this, this has blown me away. I think you guys and girls are gonna really like this as well. So let's take a closer look. So it's Norcane time with the Norcane Neverest. This is a good looking watch with that really beautifully textured dial, which looks like snow on a mountain top, which I believe is kind of the point. And you have those highlights of red with the chronometer and the tip of the second hand and a really beautiful ceramic bezel, which is this sort of like baby, light, bluey, gray, faded color. It looks truly fantastic. The whole design really works. A nice screw down sign crown, exhibition case back with a really nice engraving to the case back itself. A very comfortable and very well built bracelet with screw links, thank you very much. And a good clasp as well. As we flip that open, you can see you have adjustments on the inside hidden behind this, which is a pain. It means you have to uh, really get in there with a tool and make sure you do it properly. Um, so you get the, the slots, but it can be done. And at least you haven't got the holes, I guess, for fluid design, I guess you'd say. Uh, you do have Neverist stated on the side with a metal plaque. And this watch out of retail is priced incredibly well, surprisingly well, in fact. So when it becomes pre-owned like this, the deal is amazing. I'm not gonna bore you with the reference of this one because it is insanely long. Um, but inside this is a manufacturer automatic Norcane caliber NN204-1. A very good looking watch movement. And you can see it looks very similar to some of the Tudor movements. Um, that's because the company that used to make the movements or do make the movements for Tudor also um, do the manufacture for these guys. So only these guys can use this specific movement movement. Um, so it's not technically an in-house movement, but it is a manufacturer movement, meaning made for them, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, this one's from July 2022. It does come with its full box and paperwork, full links, and it's in fantastic condition, as you'd expect as well. So let's show it on wrist and taut dimension. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. That looks damn good. This is 40 mil by 48.5 mil lug to lug, only 12.5 mil thick and 20 mil on the lugs. Nice and comfortable and plenty of options as well and just a good watch. So go check it out on the website today. From there to a Cartier Santos for the ladies. This has a name, 
I'm not even gonna bother. Not even gonna bother. You can see it on the website. I don't even know how to pronounce that, but a really gorgeous model. And one that I know my wife really likes, and I think any ladies out there are gonna really like this. Cartier set the standard when it comes to ladies, and just in general, uh, watch design or design in general. I think they're fantastic. So let's take a closer look at this one. So as I say, it is ladies Cartier time with the Quartz Santos. And again, I'm just gonna butcher the other part of the name, so I'm just not gonna say it. This is the reference 2698, and you can very clearly see the Santos design in here. However, it's a bit more polished and a bit flatter, and it gives that sort of overall cleaner design, in my opinion. Really good looking watch. As I say, Quartz, this one's from Circa 2010s. Does come with a Cartier, uh, nice Cartier red pouch. Unfortunately, no box and paperwork. And the bracelet size will fit, I want to say, a six and a half inch wrist. Let's have a quick look. I believe it's six and a half. So this is on my wrist. Um, I'm not going to be able to get that on, but you can see the size of this one. Really, really cute. At 20 mil by 28 mil look to look, 5.5 mil thick and 12 mil looks. So this really would look good on any. Uh, any ladies wrist and I mean gents out there if you want to give it a go by all means give it a try but a gorgeous dial and gorgeous watch nonetheless Cartier is a great Christmas gift that's for sure and obviously we've got Christmas coming up treat your other half or treat yourself pick this beautiful watch up today go check it out on the website today and last but by no means least one of my favorite Christopher Wards other than the one I own obviously this is the Trident Pro 38 all black MK2, I believe they call it. It's, it's a really cool watch. And at this case size as well, it's fantastic. And on the strap, everything about this is so cool. And again, for the price, I don't think you can go wrong. So let's take a closer look at this Christopher Ward. So Christopher Ward time with the Trident Pro in black Mark II. And the reason I absolutely love this, well, there's a few reasons I love this watch. All black watches are, they, they can be really bad or they can be really good. This is one of the ones that's really good and it has multiple finishes. So rather than just being all polished or all brushed, you have a glossy front or a polished front, brush sides, they've really kept to the sort of multifaceted or multi-finished design, which I think is truly amazing. You have a really nice ceramic bezel as well, faux patina on the loom, which contrasts nicely against the black. It's just a well-designed watch, and at 38 mil as well, it's incredible. Inside is automatic ETA 2824-2 or a Salita SW200-1. Uh, the reason it's either or is because at the time when this watch was released, January 2017, um, they were still using both. They had some ETAs left over, and they were moving over to Salita. It comes paired on its original Christopher Ward strap with its black PVD buckle as well, and it's in pretty much like new condition. This PVD has held up very well. It hasn't been worn much, to be honest. There's no scratches or anything like that. Really nice screw down Christopher Ward crown. I just think if you're after an all black watch, this is a great place to look and a great place to start. As I say, January 2017 it does come with its box and paperwork, but let's show it on wrist and taut dimensions. This is one of those watches, if you have a, another half or a, a wife or a girlfriend or a boyfriend, whatever, this is a watch you could totally share between two people. It's one of those watches that I know my wife absolutely loved and she just got herself a new watch, which we'll probably announce at some point. Um, so if she hadn't got that, I think she would have probably taken this one out of stock, to be honest, because she really likes the design as well. But this is 38 mil by 45.5 mil lug to lug, only 13 mil thick and 20 mil lugs, so endless options, but it does look really good on this strap. So go check out this watch on the website today. So there you have it, guys and girls. This week's 10 watches, and as I said, we have some incredible watches coming up for you guys and girls to choose from. So do keep a close eye out. I think you are all going to be very surprised with some of the stuff we've got coming. And some that even at the point of recording this video are not yet in. There's a collection potentially coming in with some very impressive watches. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. It's gonna be a busy, busy week before my holiday, that's for sure, because I wanna really crack on, get this done and really push some of these out because I don't think they're gonna last, that's for sure. So head over to the website, check these out. Don't forget to check out our other watches. We have about 80 to 100 watches at any given time on the website, so plenty to choose from. And there's some on there that I'm surprised we still have. I think a lot of you guys and girls have completely missed them because of how far maybe in the pages they are. So do, if you get a moment, get a cup of tea, get a coffee, get a beer, get a whiskey, whatever. Sit down, have a little scroll through the world through the website, even if it's just for the photos. I mean, there's some incredible stuff there. But thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you all again next time. Take care.